the ace. Okay. We'll start with these three. Um, page of Pentacles, Temperance and Strength. You might have to muster up un enough of your strength here to overcome a situation that you're in. Um, it's about balance with both of the, the strength and the temperance card. You know, um, it's about balancing good versus evil. Um, action versus inaction, you know, um, hardness versus softness. You can go on and on. But there's good news with this situation, okay? It's all about control, taming the beast. <laughs> Sometimes when you feel wronged, you want to lash out immediately. You want to fight back and you, and you come with your, 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 your fists waving, right? But there is a time and a place to do that if you feel like you are physically threatened or there's something serious that's about to go down and you know that your life is in danger, then yes, you should fight. Um, but in other situations, it could be a little bit more nuanced. Maybe it's not so life and death, but it still remains the same. There must be balance in how you approach this situation. Your strength comes from balancing feminine and masculine energy. Okay, that's where you're going to find the serenity that you need during this difficult time. You can't just lash out and just go crazy over everything that bothers you or that everything that um, attacks you, okay? This is like an attacking energy that I'm feeling, but it's going to prevail in your direction in a good way um, because you're going to know how to move forward. You're laying a foundation and you're setting the goals. You're investing in yourself and your outcome. And that takes a lot of skill because you have to have a lot of intellectual ability to look at the situation outside of yourself, outside of your ego, outside of what you want to happen, and look at the whole chessboard. You know, people that play chess, there's a reason why they're usually smart. It's because there's a lot of planning involved. There's a lot of preparation involved. It's not just checkers where it's one move, the next move, you know, pretty simple. Yes, you can get a little bit strategized with checkers, but chess is a whole new arena. It's a little bit more complicated, and that's what life is all about, complications. Yeah, Nothing is always so clear. So in order to remain consistent in your ability, in your actions, you have to learn how to balance your emotions, and that takes a lot of strength to um, control yourself sometimes because when you're angered, and you could be rightfully so, um, three, three, three on the clock, uh, you might just want to jump in into the ring. And sometimes it takes a little bit more control to be like, okay, all right, I see what you're doing here and you're going to lose, but um, I'm going to have the last laugh, but I'm not going to stoop down to your level right now. That takes strength. You know, um, someone that, for an example, someone that practices jujitsu or fighting warrior sport, right? They usually become very humbled. And it's not because of any particular thing. It's because they know what they can do. Like they've learned self-respect, confidence. They learned the skills needed to protect themselves and fight you know, and be a warrior. So usually these types of people are very humble because they they know they have what it takes to take you down. But now they choose whether they're going to use it on you or not. You know, um, they're on another playing field. It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a, in a war, right? Um, meaning it's better to know how to fight and not you have to use it than being pushed into a war and not knowing what to do with yourself. So this is about sharpening your knives metaphorically, you know, sharpening your skills, sharpening your control, you know, um, not letting your ego get involved and, and knowing when to step into the ring, you know, and sometimes that takes pre-planning instead of just reacting. You know, we all react sometimes because we're all human. And people are crazy. 
you know, people are absolutely crazy and they will antagonize you, but they want to see you angry. These types of people, you know, so if you get angry or you get bothered or upset or whatever emotion is natural to come out, unfortunately, they like that. You know, so to remain stoic in a time when you have all these things bubbling up inside of you is where you are able to control yourself and calm down, you know, balance yourself out. And you'll also be able to control the outcome a little bit better, right? If someone's antagonizing you, if someone's instigating you, if someone tries to make you mad on purpose, if someone is trying to scam you, you know, God, these cards are king of wands yeah it's all about having the right vision you know and it all comes back to that warrior mentality of like yes i know exactly what i can do to you i know how to take you down in three seconds but i have a better vision a more mature vision of how i'm gonna do it It looks like there's someone just coming at you, right? Like these cards are just flying all over the place. Like I almost can't control them. So I just feel like someone's like throwing punches at you. And instead of like just jumping into the fight, you're backing off and you're like, you know what? I know I have enough experience here to know exactly what you're doing. And I'm not going to fall for your little trap. I'm strong. I'm confident. And I have... a. a a better vision of how I'm going to handle you. You're taking the higher road, even though you can absolutely take the ro low road, but you're not going to feel good when you do it. Knight of Swords and the Magician. So you're willing to say no. I know exactly this game. I know exactly what you're doing. And I'm not falling for it. I'm not playing with you, right? As soon as you tell someone that's instigating you to fight, like, no, 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 I'm not jumping into this. I'm not playing this game with you. You're not worth my time. You're not worth the fight, right? You have enough ability to take action when you want to, not because someone is making you take action, you know? Um, and that is when you actually have the power that you need, you know, in the magician kind of form where it's like you have the skill, the mindset, and you can direct your power at will. It's not the other way around, right? You're not a slave to somebody else's doing, right? You have control over your actions, how you're going to handle things, and what you're going to do about it. And just try to remain calm. I know that's exact. It's hard to when you're angered or upset over something and you just want to lash out. It's okay to cry. It's okay to scream, yell, go for a run, go lift weights, go hit a baseball you know, go do something to kind of like expel this energy in you. But at the end of the day, maybe just take a few deep breaths. That always helps, you know. But whatever the case is, get it out of your system somehow physically, you know. Go wash your car real good, like whatever it is. Go walk away down the stairs. Just do something else than engaging with the person that's antagonizing you. Then when you come back to yourself, you're balanced again. And now you can play the game of chess a little bit better. And you won't be so angered because you let it out. If you hold in anger, you hold in, you know, sadness, betrayal, whatever it is, your body is telling you, you know, these emotions for a reason because they're real. But how you use your emotions is where you become in control of yourself with them, the magician. But you're, you're looking really good. Like, you know exactly what's happening. And, um... You could be assertive with your words and not be angered, right? That's that's a true power, you know? Like, you think of, like, the um, stoic lawyer, for example, right? I'm not saying all lawyers are equal, but someone that can control themselves in an argument, speak eloquently, directly, say what they need to do, say, but not get flustered by what the other person hits back at them. It's a game of tennis, right? They knock the ball on your court, you hit it back. But the, the more that you remain calm, the better you're going to perform. 
because you can focus. When you get so angered that um, you know, you're seeing red, like you can't see what's going on around you, you're gonna act erratic, you're not gonna focus well, and it's not gonna work for you. It's all about making that decision. Do I do this or not? Do I fight this right now or not? Do I give it a, you know, give it a night, sleep on it. The problem's still gonna be there, you know? <sighs> you can almost cause a stalemate that way too, like in certain problems because a lot of narcissists will use the lack of time as a way to squeeze you into a fight. You gotta decide now. There's no way that you can wait. You can't decide tomorrow. Like it's all pressure, it's all false pressure, right? So if you just call them on their game and be like, you know what, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow, you know, and you, you control the situation for them, right? You don't get trapped in their booby traps, right? Because they're, they'll, they'll lay out a whole bunch of traps for you and they'll always try to use your emotions against you. Especially if someone is um, trying to take advantage of you, scam you, you're gonna get angry, of course, you know? They're, you know, they want to take something from you. They want to take your happiness away. Right? Because now you don't have time to be happy and be fulfilled. They, you know, they are taking away your attention and putting it on them. Why do that? Is it worth it? Is it worth putting your attention on someone that's just trying to F you over? You got to think about it. You know, um, and, and play chess with certain people, especially scam artists. Because they're, they're icky and they're slimy people. And um, unfortunately, there's people like that out there that are willing to jump on anybody just to get a little bit out of you. And of course you're going to get angry, but take the anger out, you know, by running or, or working out or dancing or singing, whatever it is that you can expel some energy from, you'll feel relieved. You'll feel like a weight off your chest. And that's how you alchemize. That's how you alchemize. If someone throws you a bunch of hate, you, you take that like an appetizer and you gobble it up and you turn it into fuel. You don't let it like, you don't drink it like poison and let it just seep into you and stay in you, okay? Um, but you're the magician, you know how to alchemize and this is what you're gonna do. That's exactly what you're going to do. And you'll feel so much more respect for yourself when you handle situations in, in a, a way of integrity, right? If, if you stand by integrity and you are a good person, you stand by your word, you do all the right things, you, don't, you treat people with respect, you never scam anybody, you know, and someone tries to scam you, you're like, what? How could, how could you even live like this? You know, like you could be completely confused by how, by how people act in this world. There's a lot of, you know, humans are the biggest predators, okay? We're tricky. And unfortunately, there's good and bad people out there. There's a the dark and light energy. So it's about alchemizing and about balancing. Remember, balancing the good and the dark. The light always wins. The light always wins. So just remain in your light, in your bright white light. And when the dark ooeyness of people comes trying to attach to you, you just shine brighter and you stand your ground. And that's how you're going to alchemize this situation. Star. It's about shining. I just feel like sometimes when you're in a... It's kind of like when you're in a room of darkness right? Complete darkness, right? And you light a match. That one little tiny match can light up the whole room. And you could light up the room for other people too. Whether it's for other people, for yourself, one little light source can make the whole room bright. But you can't do that in an opposite way. You can't be in a sign, uh, sunny room, like a sun room, right? And then try to cover it with darkness you could try to cover the windows right but there's always going to be sunlight seeping in and there's always going to be like this tint of light still because the light always wins
you're going to resist. You're going to resist falling here. You're going to resist being taken down by certain types of energies. Because that's what they want. They want you to become obsessed with them in a bad way, right? Like, they win that way. When you just get fixated on how bad someone is or what they're doing to you or how they're trying to scam you and you're just like, ah, and you think about it constantly, they win. Right? So figure out for you how you're going to alchemize whatever energy is being thrown at you that's dark, mean, whatever it is. And alchemize it turn it into fuel for your improvement you know basically like oh you someone someone hates you they want to take you down take that hate eat it up and go for a run and you'll have your fastest run ever right use that anger for the good for you not turning around recycling it and throwing anger out back out at the world right because now you're just a catalyst for bad change you're just spreading around hate as well right if you alchemize the hate and you make it good, you let it go and it dissipates and it's done. It doesn't go anywhere. You win. And then you won't be so fixated on what to do, on how to deal with this person. You'll have a clearer mind of how to deal with them and you won't let them occupy your mind, right? It's hard to do and everyone is gonna get upset from you know in, in life and I constantly get bewildered by how how dark people can be towards one another but that's not going to go away it's about how you handle it that's how you change the world if you just spread the hatred too because someone did that to you you're not any better you just handle it you handle it with respect and dignity and you don't let it seep into you forever There you go. Truth, beauty, and wisdom. The lotus jewel. Underneath your feathered exterior lies a radiant diamond glimmering with truth, beauty, and wisdom. That's what you do. The lotus comes from a dark place. The lotus grows in mud, in the dark, under the ground. And from it, it grows this gorgeous flower. So that's what you're doing. You're learning how to alchemize. You are exactly what this card is right now. The Lotus Jewel. You are a jewel. And remember how to use it to the better of all, better for you, better for the world. How you choose to handle darkness is an exact reflection on how the world is going to be. We are all part of this change. We're all part. We all are responsible for each other. And remembering that when someone throws hatred at you or is trying to take something from you or whatever it is you remain balanced and that's where you're going to make the best decisions